everyone i am dr adarsh deep and today we are going to discuss about the pests of cotton cotton is a soft fluffy staple fiber grows in a ball or protective capsule around the seeds of cotton plants of genus gossypium it is the king of fibers usually commercially referred as white gold it is an important commercial crop and plays a vital role in human civilization economy and social and political affairs of the world because of different properties of its products it is the most important vegetable fiber chiefly grown for the cotton lint which is a backbone of textile industry its fur is used in the production of mattresses surgical cotton photographic film paper etc cotton seeds contain edible oil used for cooking cotton seeds cake serve as important feed for livestock as contain 40% protein and other minerals cotton stem is used as organic manure or biofuel its ash is used for rubbing and washing and its dusting can control other pests also the scientific name of cotton is gossypium species I see species here because there are many species that are cultivated in the different part of the world. Cotton belongs to the family Malvaceae. Here is the distribution map of the cotton. As you can see here, cotton is cultivated in many countries, but India along with the China is one of the major producer of the cotton. And one more important thing which I want to share with you that India is the only country in the world where all the four cultivated species of cotton gossypium arboretum gossypium herbaceum gossypium gersetum and gossypium gabbardensis along with intra and interspecific hybrids are cultivated along the diverse agroclimatic conditions varying from 8 to 32 degree north latitude to 70 to 80 degree longitude so economically it is a very important crop of the india after completing the chapter you will know about the systematic status habits general appearance life cycle damage caused and control of the pectinophora gossypiella that is pink ball worm and also about the habits the systematic status and the damage caused by the red cotton bug cotton grey weevil and cotton jesset so let us start one by one so today we are going to discuss five different pests of the cotton which are pink ball worm that is platydera or pectinophora gossypiella red cotton bug desdercus singulatus cotton grey weevil mylocerus undecim pustulus cotton jesset empoesca devastans and surface grasshopper protogonus tracheopteris so first of all i am going to discuss the biology of pectinophora gossypiella that is pink ball worm that causes severe damage to the cotton crop worldwide and to do so i will address its systematic position or the taxonomic status its distribution and general features along with the point of identification its habits life cycle nature of damage and control measures let us start with its systematic position Pectinophora gossypiella belongs to class Insecta, order Lepidoptera, and family Galeachidae. Let's look at the distribution of the Pectinophora gossypiella. This map shows that this pest found in all the countries that cultivate cotton, and it is a major problem for the cotton farmers worldwide. It is such a huge problem. that scientists wrote 14700 research papers on this pest 
in india it is very common in uttar pradesh andhra pradesh punjab tamil nadu and maharashtra as far as host plants are concerned the main host plant is cotton but it also infects other malvaceous plants like okra that is lady's finger hollyhocks and hibiscus so although it is a major pest of cotton it can also infect the other plants of malvesi family and survive on them so they act as alternative hosts let us learn about its habits these are nocturnal insects so active in the night and in the night they are attracted towards the light also the adult mate just after emergence the main infective stage is caterpillar adult do not harm the plant they just lay the eggs on it but the caterpillar feeds on the different parts of the plant like buds shoots flower and bowl as it feeds on soft tissue so everything is affected adults feed on nectaries under the cotton leaves and may live up to the 2 months in the winter the larvae undergoes hibernation let us see how we can identify pectinophora gossypiella or what is the general appearance of this pest while identifying it you have to keep three points in mind first is its color second is antennal features and third is labial palp it is a small moth of dark or gray brown in color and are of about 8 to 9 mm in body length they bear black and white spots on their four wings and if you stretch the wings you can see that hind wings does not have any color only the four wings are dark brown or dark gray with the spots on it the antennae are filiform or the thread like and labial palpi are long and curved outwards labial palpi are the part of labia that is the mouth part so they are long and curved outwards let us talk about the wings a little bit more you can see the four wing is long elongated oval and they are pointed at the tip bearing a white fringe the hind wings are light in color and their margins are deeply fringed so why they are called as pink ball worm nothing about these adult insects are pink but if you look at the larvae the mature larvae shows this pinkish hue giving it now we will study the life cycle of pectinophora gossypiella its life cycle is completed in 20 to 77 days in summers life cycle is completed in short span so known as short life cycle and in winters life cycle is completed in longer span so known as long life cycle the adult breed from april to november life cycle of this pest just like the other lepidopteran completed in four stages first is egg second is larva that is caterpillar in this case then pupa and adult let us look at each stage into a little more detail first of all eggs eggs are laid singly or in groups of 2 to 10 eggs on all parts of the cotton plants a single female lays about 300 eggs they are white flat and oval they are very minute and it is difficult to find them on the cotton plant they are 0.35 mm in length and 0.26 mm in width so cannot be located on the cotton plant the caterpillar emerges in about 7 days when they emerge they are about 1 mm in length and white in color they have dark heads but body color is white as they grow older 
they get the pinkish hue and that gives them the name pink ball worm. The newly emerged caterpillar bores through the bowls and seeds and they feed on the tissue inside the flowering bud and young bowls. The mature larvae are 10 to 12 mm long and red pinkish with a double red band on the upper portion of each segment. They go through five molds and it took 10 to 30 days to become fully matured. When get mature, larva comes out of the bowl to fall on the ground and pupate in the silk cocoon in the soil under the fallen leaves. So if you open the ball, you will find the caterpillars only. To find the pupa, you have to look into the soil. Pupa is 6 mm in length and 2.7 mm in width. Normally, it lasts for the 7 to 20 days. The maximum pupation occurs in the monsoon. So, large number of adults emerge out during July and August. Sometimes, larval stage is long and winter passed in the caterpillar stage in a white cocoon stage which is found in the soil among the debris, bowls in the fields and more commonly inside the seeds in storage. So normally the mood emerges out in the seven days. So again you can see in this figure the life cycle of Pectinophora gossipiella. Adult lays eggs on all parts of the plants. After the incubation period of seven days, young larva comes out which is known as caterpillar. These larvae go through five molds and took the time about two weeks. The mature larvae fall on the ground and pupate in a silken cocoon in the soil under the fallen leaves. From this cocoon, mold emerges out in seven days. Let us look at the nature of damage by Pectinophora gossipiella. I have told you already that main damage caused by the caterpillar by boring in the shoots, flowers and bolts. But before going to all these points, I would like to show you some pictures. In this slide, these are the parts of cotton plant which are unaffected by the pests. Now let us see. What happens if there is Pectinophora gossipiella antis or it is present there? In this slide, two flowers are there. Normal flower bloom properly and this is an affected flower shows the rosette bloom. Now watch this video carefully. When larva bores the bud, it makes a web inside the bud and that way bud cannot open and flower properly. It gives the close flower look and this is known as the rosette bloom. When you open this rosette bloomed flower, the larva which is present inside can be seen, which you can see in this video. Now this is the normal ball and this is the affected ball. In the affected ball you will find a hole there. Larva enters through it and eat up the internal tissue. In this video again you see the infected bowl and when the bowls are opened more larvae are found inside and they are of 1 mm to 1 cm in length. So multiple larvae of different stages are found inside the bowl. This is the normal ball and opened properly and this is the ball which had been affected by the Pectinophora gossipiella caterpillar. It has opened early and as a result it has got fungal infection. And here in this picture you can see the stain caused by the fungal infection. Let us go to the nature of damage point by point now. In the younger plant larvae don't have flowers or bowls to attack. So in those plants, they attack the tender shoots or the leaves 
As a result, terminal shoots of the plant dries up. In bigger plants, flowers and bowls are attacked. So, infestation of flower caused shedding of bud as larvae eat up the internal tissue. If the buds flower, then they fail to open up completely due to the webbing of the larvae. So, give the appearance of roseate bloom. In case of infested ball, the lint quality and quantity both are badly affected. As larvae tunneling into them and destroy pulp and lint. Infested seeds either eaten up or damaged by the caterpillars in a way that they can't germinate. And also infested bowls open earlier so get fungal infection and stain the lint. Now we will discuss the control of Actinophora gossypiella. Use of integrated pest management is the best strategy. So first is the mechanical control. Most important control measure against this pest is large scale destruction of the resting stages of the larvae in the double seed of cotton. This destruction should be carried out as early as possible after cotton harvest and much earlier than the distribution of the cotton seeds. The destruction can be achieved by eating or fumation or even by exposing the seeds to hot sun. Then collection and destruction of the infested balls, leaves, flower birds, flowers etc. along with the shoot quite early in the season. Deep plowing in the month of February to expose the hibernating larvae helps in killing them. Retuning of cotton should be avoided in the infested areas and pest resistant varieties of cotton should be grown. Late planting of the crop to avoid the overwintering larvae is the cultural method. These overwintering larvae after pupation and emergence of the moat require a plant to lay eggs and those eggs could hatch out in the larvae and those larvae would require the food but if the crops planted late then these larvae would not find anything to feed on in that way we can kill the hibernating larvae as far as biological control is concerned, Bacillus thuringiensis K, serotype H39, 3B, strain Z52, Bacillus thuringiensis, serover, Kurstaki, 3A, 3B, 3C, 5%, mites like Microbracon greeny, Microbracon lefrei can be used to control this pest. Triflex pectinophori is the egg parasite which can destroy the eggs of this pest and Elasmus platidri can be used to control the larvae and pupa stages of this pest. Regarding the chemical control, Spraying of these chemicals are quite effective. Beta cyphloctrin 2.45%, bifenthrin 10%, carbiril 15%, chlorofluazuron 5%, chlorpyrifos 50%, ethione 50%, and imidacloprid 48% are quite effective. Now we are going to study three more pests of cotton and about them I am going to address you only the systematic position, their habits and their nature of damage as per your syllabus. So first of all we are going to discuss about the red cotton bug. It is again a very serious pest of cotton. And the most prominent feature of this pest is, of course, its color, which is bright red or orange, with some black spots. 
and markings on the body. The zoological name of red cotton bug is Dysdericus cingulatus and as far as classification is concerned, it belongs to class Insecta, order Hemiptera and family Pyrocoridae. Regarding the habits of Dystericus cingulatus, this insect is active during the day. So it is a diurnal insect. They have piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. So feed on the cell sap. There is no hibernation stage in the life cycle. And like most hemipterian pests, they feed in a group. They can survive on other malvaceous plants also. But the major host is cotton. As they feed gregariously and suck the cell sap of the plant, they adversely affect the crop. And it is very important to know that it not only sucks the sap and causes the primary damage to it, to the crop, it also transmits the spores of a pathogenic filamentous fungus which causes a disease known as stigmatomycosis which causes serious damage to the cotton balls. Regarding the nature of damage, both adults and nymphs are damage causing stages in the life cycle of the red cotton bug. Both of them suck the cell sap from the cotton balls and from the leaves. They also suck sap from the immature seeds which do not ripe and remain lightweight. This causes the poor lint formation and the shriveling of balls. It also affects the germinating power of the seeds. This Dericus cingulatus inject a microorganism in the balls that causes red stains on the cotton fiber. The bug is therefore called as red cotton stainer also. Moreover, adults found in the lint get crushed during the ginning, emitting bad color and stain the lint. So this pest again reduce the quantity and quality of the cotton. In this video you can see how they damage the crop. The lint gets stained by the excreta of the bug. The growth of the ball is reduced and how they causes the red stain on the bowl also. So lint is of poor quality and very less oil is extracted from the seeds. And seed may lose their power of germination also. The next pest is cotton grey weevil. The zoological name of this pest is Milocerus undecim pustulatus. It is a small insect of 4 mm in length and dark grey in color. So also known as cotton grey weevil. About its classification, it belongs to class insecta, order Coleoptera and family Curculionidae. Regarding its habits, it is a diurnal organism, so active during the day. Its lifespan is about 30 days and has four stages in the life cycle like egg, grub, pupa and adult. Adult appears at the end of April and feeds on the retune cotton. A ratooning is the agricultural practice of harvesting a monocot crop by cutting most of the above ground portion but leaving the roots and growing shoot spices intact so as to allow the plants to recover and produce a fresh crop in the next season. So this we will survive on the ratoon cotton. Their head is snout like and they have pincer like jaws. Adults feed on aerial part of the host plant. The grubs feed on root and penetrate into the vascular tissue of the stem. Their pupation occur in the soil within the earthen cells. Regarding the damage, damage is caused by both grubs and adults. Grubs feed on the roots and adults feed on the leaves, flowers, flower buds and cotton balls. They may cause 5% to 30% loss of the yield. Now the next pest which is known as cotton jessid. 
The zoological name of this pest is Ampuesca divestans. Regarding its classification, it belongs to class Insecta, order Hemiptera, and family Jessidae. Regarding the habits, these insects attracted toward the light at night. The adults changes their color seasonally. They are red colored in winters and greenish yellow in summers. Adult insects suck the cell sap from the plant tissue. Cotton is the main host of this pest and potato, brinjal, bhindi, hollyhock are the alternative host of this pest. Eggs are laid into spongy parent chymatous tissue of the plant and they jump on slight disturbance. Regarding the damage, both adults and nymphs are damage causing stages in the life cycle. Both of them suck the cell sap and inject toxin into the plant tissue. They cause wilting of the leaves and due to this wilting, photosynthetic activity of the plant is seriously affected. Due to this growth and number of balls greatly reduced. So the yield decreased by 25 to 40%. Now watch this video carefully. You can see here that life cycle of this small bug comprises three stages, egg, nymph and the adult. Both adults and nymphs are damage causing stages as they suck the cell sap and inject toxin into the plant tissue and cause hopper burn. Their attack leads to wilting of the leaf followed by the drying up of the apex and periphery of the leaf which become yellow and finally brown and the necrotic. So this is all about the best of cotton and now in this session we are going to discuss that how different questions may be framed from this chapter. The questions may be framed in two categories. One is very short answer type questions which you have to answer in two to three lines and sometime in a single word. And second is the short answer type category which you have to answer in a single paragraph. So let us do it. So very short answer type questions. First question is enlist two identification features of Pectinophora gossipiella. Next is give the scientific name of cotton grey weevil. Next is how can Pectinophora be controlled? Next is write about the mode of damage caused by cotton jacid. Next question is what do you mean by red cotton stainer? Next is what is hopper burn? Next is write the damage causing stage of this Dercus cingulatus. And the last question from this category is name various stages of life cycle of Pectinophora gossipiella. Now the second category short answer type questions. First question from this category is how can Pectinophora gossipiella be controlled? Next is, give the taxonomic status, habits and damage caused by cotton grey weevil. Next is, write short note on red cotton bug. Next is, explain the life cycle of Pectinophora gossipiella. Next is, describe taxonomic status, habits identification features and control of Pectinophora gossipiella. And last question from this category is Ampoesca divestans is harmful for cotton. Justify the statement. So do all the questions and make a PDF and send the teacher in your college. It will help you in examination. Thank you. Goodbye.